Hi, and welcome to the Ask Dr. Angela podcast with everyone's favorite OBGYN, Dr. Angela Jones. Have you ever been too embarrassed or shy to ask your own doctor about your, you know, girl parts? Well, you've come to the right place to get straight answers. Feel free to ask Dr. Angela anything women's health related. Obstetrics and gynecology? She keeps it real. Pregnancy? She's been there, done that. Menopause? She'll get you through. Young or old, Dr. Angela's got you covered, girl. Now here's Dr. Angela. What's good, people? This is Dr. Angela, everyone's favorite OBGYN, and I would like to welcome you to episode 282 of the Ask Dr. Angela podcast. This is really interesting. I saw a new patient uh, the other day. I'm seeing new patients every day, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. And she said to me, Dr. Angela, can you make sure that you use the smallest what is that thing that you use to put in my vagina? And I said, you mean speculum? And she said, yes, make sure that you use the smallest speculum because I don't like these exams. And of course, we had a good laugh about that because I said, well, hell, what woman likes these exams? And so she went on to explain to me that her previous OBGYN, because I always ask people, how is it that I have the privilege and the honor of seeing you today? Because indeed, it is always a privilege and an honor to be able to see people, women, to be able to take care of women, that you all entrust me with your medical history and your healthcare completely blows me away. And I am always and will always be completely humbled by that. But she said to me, my previous OBGYN was a male. And he actually is the one that told me that those instruments, what do you call them? And so I said speculums. And she goes, yeah, he's the one that actually told me that speculums come in more than one size. I mean, who knew? And of course, as an OBGYN, I kind of take it for granted because I'm like, well, who didn't know? (laughs) But then again, if you're not an OBGYN and you're not familiar with all of the instrumentation, then you probably wouldn't know. So when she mentioned that to me, we went ahead and we did her exam and I tried to oblige her and I used the smallest speculum that I had. And frankly, the smallest speculum that I had was inadequate because it did not allow me as the gynecologist to see what I needed to see, which was her cervix, so that I could obtain the pap smear. And so I subsequently went on to say to her, I got to tell you, I can't use the smallest speculum that I own because your exam is going to be inadequate. So I'm going to go a size up, which is really the standard size, and we should be good from there. And so I ended up using my standard size speculum, I obtained the pap smear and voila, we were done. So here's the deal with speculums and speculum sizes. One size does not fit all. Speculums come in a variety of sizes and shapes. The the narrower speculum is called a Peterson speculum. The wider duck-billed speculum is called a grave speculum. And certainly there are longer speculums because women do occasionally have longer vaginas, I'm sorry, longer vaginas, and sometimes deep pelvises, and sometimes the vagina is so long and the cervix is way, 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 way at the top of the vagina, and so I need a longer speculum so that I can gain access to it to obtain whatever sample it is that I'm obtaining, which again is usually a pap smear. So the pediatric speculum that I used at her request didn't come close to showing me what I needed. And really, I think what it came down to not was, was not so much speculum size, but just the fact that the previous providers that she had seen were not gentle with the exam. And, you know, certainly I said to her, I have to tell you, I'm going to be really gentle with you because remember, once a year, I'm on the other side of someone's table getting the same thing done. And I don't want someone just shoving some cold plastic or metal, depending on what your OBGYN uses, you know, instrument inside my girlfriend, i.e. my vagina. So, you know, certainly there are circumstances where a smaller speculum is in order, whether it's on a 90-year-old woman with vaginal atrophy that's not sexually active and her vaginal opening is almost non-existent to perhaps there is that, you know, occasional pediatric patient that you have to examine. You know, certainly you have smaller speculums for them. You know, the more wide build or grave speculums are sometimes useful in women that, you know, 
have more prolapse or loose vaginal walls, longer vaginas. There, again, really is not a one size fits all. It just depends on your your anatomical makeup and what your vagina looks like, what your, you know, how deep your pelvis is, where your cervix is located sort of thing. But the one thing that I can assure you is that it's worthwhile mentioning if pelvic exams are not your thing, and I don't know that they're really anybody's thing, you know, it's fine to mention to your provider, you know, maybe be a little bit gentler. You know, if you can get away with the smaller size, do it. Most of us do. I never use a larger speculum than is necessary. Um, So, you know, find some solace in that. But I really thought that it was amusing when I had this woman that came to me and she says, there, it was a man that told me that these speculums came in more than one size. And uh, we had a good laugh about that. And I said, well, it was a woman who finally got your exam right. So anyway, this year's podcast is going to be so much fun. You know, I'm bringing you lots of questions that I hear on a day-to-day basis, queries that I'm getting from around the world. And I want to hear from you. There is no topic that's off limits. There are no questions that are ridiculous or dumb. I see and hear so much. And I'm here to discuss it all for you. So as is the huge, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I appreciate your support more than you know. And I'm so looking forward to what 2019 has to offer. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have uh, more featured guests and just um, a lot of things uh, to look forward to. You know, the book, uh, the podcast being back, the blog poster back. So you all know where to reach me. Check me out, www.askdrangela.com. That's A-S-K-D-R-A-N-G-E-L-A.com. All of my social media outlets are there, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Follow me on all of the above. You can direct message me or you can send me a direct email. I do get to all queries. In closing, I would like to leave you with this for thought. I'm a slow walker but I never walk back. That's from Abraham Lincoln. I'm going to say that again. I'm a slow walker, but I never walk back. Onward and forward. Until next time, look better, feel better, be better. Can't wait to reconnect on episode 283 of the Ask Dr. Angela podcast. Thank you for listening to the Ask Dr. Angela podcast. For more information on women's health and the show notes for this episode, please visit Dr. Angela at www.askdrangela.com. While you're there, don't forget to leave your own message for Dr. Angela. See you soon. All of the information provided and discussed in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and should not take the place of consulting a physician. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease or illness and does not and should not replace treatment from a medical professional.